The limits of debate in this country are, 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 are established before the debate even begins, and everyone else is marginalized. They're made to seem either to be communists or some sort of disloyal person. A kook, there's a word, and now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that, that, is, that is, sh should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. He who does not study and understand history is doomed to repeat it. And the same play has been being performed throughout the history of the world by what we call the builders, the controllers, the puppet masters, whatever you want to call it. This is the age of deception and everybody today is living in a fantasy world and they're promoting agendas that they don't understand because somebody has told them that it's the right thing to do I've learned a few things what I'm gonna try to do today is sort of give you some of what I've learned and you can take it for whatever you think it's worth I hope that you will take it out of here and use it to search for your own truth. Two-thirds of the Freemasons don't go beyond the third degree. Freemasonry and the Illuminati are like a glove in a hand. Well, well hold and on just a second, Fritz. I, I mean, I know some okay. Freemasons. I even work with one, and I sure. mean, he seems to be the most down-to-earth guy I've ever known. Sure. And, and as a matter of fact, if they even get to talking to politics too much about him, <laughs> I feel kind of sort of that I yeah. even know a little bit more what's going on than him. How, right. how is he controlling the world? Oh, he's just a member of a lodge system. We're talking, um, the lodge system needs a lot of good men at the base to support its structure. My mind rebels at stagnation. They're building what they call the perfect race. They're perfecting humanity in order to control nature they're building the utopian world that they perceive that we need they have placed themselves in, a, in an elitist attitude to tell the rest of us what we need and the truth is we don't need them to do that okay they haven't got the right to do that they think they do because they think we're just a bunch of stupid cattle and I gotta tell you for the most part most people prove them right all the time not intentionally but because the knowledge the truth has been withheld from the people and that's how they manipulate people is by withholding the truth and controlling them with the lies the things that controlled people back in ancient Rome you know where they had bread and circus mm -hmm. they're using the, the same formulas uh, that they used in antiquity on us today and bread and circus simply means that if you give the common person entertainment and plenty of food like the junk food we get they'll be happy and most people as long as they have their beer and their football game are happy unfortunately that is true Stalin and Churchill and Roosevelt mm -hmm. who were the allied leaders they were all three Freemasons. These people, uh, they say whatever it takes to, to, um, to be popular, mm -hmm. and then they do whatever they want. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! In a letter dated 22 January 1870,
Massini wrote to Pike. Now, Albert Pike is this high mason who wrote this, the manual, if you like, of Scottish Freemasonry. He said the following. With their systems, their central authorities, and diverse modes of correspondence between high grades of the same right, organized as they are at present, but we must create a super right which will remain unknown, to which we will call those Masons of high degree whom we shall select. With regard to our brothers in Masonry, these men must be pledged to the strictest secrecy. Through this supreme right we will govern all Freemasonry, which will become the one international center, the more powerful because its direction will be unknown. Now, Albert Pike wrote a letter to Mancini, and that was dated August 15, 1871, in which he propagated that there should be a world order, a one order where all nations are under the control of one central organization. And in order to achieve this, they planned, and there are numerous quotes for this, so I've put a number on the screen, because some will say, I don't trust this, I don't trust that, I don't trust the other. Here are references down there, there are references up there, there will be references in other slides, so it comes from different sources. He said, and this was, by the way, on display in the British Museum, and could be seen there until it was taken away. The First World War, to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia, protector of orthodoxy, and bring about an atheistic communistic state. Did that happen? Yes. Now that was written long before this event. Long before this event. This was written in 1871. This war broke out in 1914. The Second World War. That's also written long before the event. To originate between Great Britain and Germany, to strengthen communism as, as antithesis to the Judea Christian culture and bring about a Zionist state in Israel. Did it achieve this objective? Yes. In fact, after this war, Israel in its present form was reinstated under the protection of Britain. And then, interestingly enough, a Third World War, a Middle Eastern war involving, involving Judaism and Islam and spreading internationally. That's fascinating. Is that uh, on the cards, or what do you think? That which we must say to the crowd is, we worship a God, but it is the God that one adores without superstition. To you, Sovereign Grand Inspectors General, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of the high degree, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. When you start laying angles over top of grids, you're going to come up with all kinds of symbols. Albert Pike. He was a Confederate officer, a general. He wrote the word Lucifer twice in his book, Morals and Dogma, and he's talking about the origin of the word Lucifer as meaning bringer of light. So not only do we have political globalization, but we have economic globalization, and we have religious globalization. So when you see any kind of an agenda that contributes to this one world order, or as the Ed Bush has called it, new world order, or, you know, Hitler, who is also of these bloodlines, also referred to new world order. Uh, th that seems to be a popular term with them. Right, and, and I yeah. noticed earlier uh, when you had mentioned it, you just said world order, that you didn't put the new in there. Why is that? Because it's not new at all. On the back of the one dollar bill, you'll see the crest with the pyramid in it. But that pyramid in the Illuminati consists of three pyramids and a sphinx, but their crest is this crest. The Illuminati is the occult organization that we belong to. It means the light bearer. 
The eye is Lucifer. The triangle of the capstone is the tribunal of the Rothschild family, which is called the Holy Family. They lead the Illuminati. The Illuminati names don't used much anymore, except by everyday people who find out about it. And the political part has a name in each country, and the United States is called the Council of Foreign Relations. Since the time of World War Wilson, including him, there has never been a president of the United States that was not an Illuminati. Freemasonry and the Illuminati are like a glove and a hand. It's not that every Freemason is uh, in the Illuminati. It's that this is just one more uh, system or lodge or secret society that's controlled by them. There's something that I would point out to our listeners out there in television land, and that is, is that the movers and shakers do not become rich and powerful and then join the Illuminati. They become, they become rich and powerful because they are part of these Illuminati bloodlines. I could go back and essentially every war that there is, I could go through and show how these families have created them, manipulated them. There's some disinformation out there that I need to clarify, and that is uh, the, the misunderstanding that's common out there is that this man, Adam Weishaupt, which was a pseudonym, a name that he had taken, actually, started the Illuminati. Uh, he did uh, create a modern structure for it. He was paid by these families to create a modern structure. But he didn't originate the Illuminati. The Illuminati goes back thousands of years before him. If we go back into antiquity, we will see that there were certain families that uh, were deified as gods, like Pharaoh, Alexander the Great. These powerful families believed they were gods, and they uh, controlled through their priesthoods in these mystery religions their, uh, the people that were uh, subservient to them. All of the royalty and aristocrats of Europe are descended from one single bloodline. Then when you go to look at our presidents, you find that uh, 11 of our presidents, at least 11, are part of that bloodline. Okay, Fritz. Well, you talked about how these Illuminati uh, families, when they have power and we can see that, then they go into hiding. Uh, most people would say that the Templars, the Knights Templars, were one of these Illuminati structures. Could you explain basically how they supposedly went into hiding? Because you hear about the Templars, they had quite a long reign, and then uh, the French turned against them, and then they were outlawed by the Pope, and then they just disappeared out of history. Right, and, uh, but they didn't. Although the Pope outlawed them, they were able to flee, and initially they went to places in Spain and Portugal, and from there they uh, boarded ships and they sailed to Scotland. And there was a decision made to uh, give Scotland its independence, and the Knights Templars that landed in Scotland then in the Ban uh, Battle of Bannockburn helped the Scottish gain their independence and then became very prominent in the affairs of Scotland. Well, you know, Fritz, I saw the movie Braveheart, and I don't remember them being any Templar Knights in that movie. <laughs> yes, that's true, but uh, the movie ended before the Battle of Bannockburn. Oh, all right, I understand now. Okay. Well, Fritz, now that we know basically a little bit about the Illuminati and about how they structure their system, can you give us a little bit of the mindset of these Illuminati families? I mean, why do these families, these 13 families and other families, feel that they have the right or the authority to control almost every aspect of our lives? Um, these families, uh, since antiquity, have believed that they were gods. And, of course, they have been worshipped in many periods as gods. Um, and they continue to pass that prideful belief uh, down gener uh, from one generation to another. They believe that they're, they're a superior being. Oftentimes, when I've uh, 
seen quotes by these people or heard people relate what and they heard, um, you see that they refer to us as ants or cattle, and that's they basically have the idea that they were born to be gods and rule us, and and we were born to serve them. They made a decision that uh, they would use uh, Christianity for their own ends. So they established churches that they themselves controlled, and they went behind the scenes and uh, set up a lot of fronts. So what you see, for instance, as proof of what I'm talking about, is at the end of World War II, and there was commission sent around Europe to examine all of the churches and cathedrals that had been damaged by the bombing, and they found something like 80% of these churches had hidden uh, cult altars underneath the Christian altar um, that wasn't exposed until the, they were damaged. In other words, what was was happening was is these churches were built on ley lines and satanic rituals had been secretly practiced in these Christian churches all down through the Middle Ages and up to, to present times. These were sacred sites that the churches were built on. In fact, some of them were built on very uh, sacred um, druid sites and things like this. And so the Christian churches were simply uh, functioning as a front so that these people could do uh, their human sacrifices and so forth in secret. And of course then they became uh, pillars of society with their multiple personalities. They could have a front personality that was the ideal Christian and uh, on the Sabbat on Friday night they could be sacrificing somebody and perhaps on Sunday morning they could be the reverend that was giving the ser sermon. If you go throughout Europe, you'll see a large number of the churches had winged reptilian gargoyles put on them, <laughs> including um, something that's really bizarre. They would have uh, um, people, statues of people bent over uh, what? Uh, how do you describe it on television? They're bent over taking a dump, you know. And this is on the side of a. Cathedral. This is on sides of churches and that were relief. built. The, the statues built naked people uh, showing their their bare bottoms. And if you ask why did these Masonic trade guilds build gargoyles and people uh, taking an excrement? You're told they did it for Christ. And I guess, I guess what people really don't understand is that most of Christianity evolved from the Catholic religion. And the word Catholic itself means universal. And so they just went out into their areas and just absorbed all of the local religions of whatever land they were at. That's very well said. There were a number of mystery religions that bestowed their authority into the Catholic Church. For instance, the mystery religion of Dagon, uh, had the, which was the fish god. And you'll notice that one of the symbols that the Christian Jews uh, today is the fish. And the Pope's hat, his mitre hat, was the crown of authority of the head of the mystery religion of uh, of Dagon. So you mean, Fritz, when I'm driving around in my car and I see another car in front of me with the little fish symbol on the back of it, that the symbol, in reality, even though they believe it represents Christ, is really a symbol for the Dagon mystery religion? I don't think that, that you'll find Christians putting it on there because they worship Dagon. But... Um, uh, I, all I'm doing is, is, is saying um, a lot of these symbols have histories beyond what the Christian church thinks about. I've, I've seen 
a number of churches with the Masonic Knights Templar logo on the side of their churches. Mm -hmm. And what logo is that? It's a cross and a crown. Cross and crown. Right. I've seen all-seeing eyes. There's, there's Catholic churches that have the Illuminati all-seeing eye. To someone who hasn't been initiated into, um, who hasn't studied this, the the whole um, the subject is is so vast and so incredible that that uh, it's really difficult to absorb. This thing started in antiquity. These people controlled everything back then. They never gave up control, although they they have worked through trade guilds and the Masonic Lodge and other things. Um, they've always had the power. They never gave up the power. You have to understand the agenda, you have to understand who's bringing it about and why before you can see the manipulations and how people are being used and manipulated to bring it about. The way that this can be done uh, with a very few people, at the peak that is, is because if you look at every organization today, be it uh, a university, a school, a government, a secret society, anything, a multinational company, business of any kind, they're structured as a pyramid, which works like this. In any organization, uh, you've got a very, very few people at the peak of the pyramid. That very few people know exactly what that organization's about, what its real agenda is, what it's really trying to achieve. The further you come down from that peak in any organization, you're meeting more and more and more people who know less and less and less and less about what the organization's really about. They only know their part. For example, if you take Paul Wolfowitz, who runs the, uh, the World Bank, uh, through him you can control the entire organization. You don't need to control what the dishwasher or the toilet cleaner thinks or does or believes in. You just need to control what he does and what he believes in. And what he does will permeate the entire organization. And that's how you control with very, very small power base, an entire global population of, of 6 billion people. The CIA call this compartmentalization, keeping from everyone else in the pyramid how what they're doing in apparent innocence links in with what other people are doing in apparent innocence to produce a very sinister pattern. So the banking system is a pyramid going to a peak. The intelligence agency network in the world is a pyramid going to a peak. The multinational company network is a pyramid. So is the global media and so on. And there is a global pyramid within which all these work, in which the peaks of all these individual pyramids, banking, uh, business, media, etc., fuse into one peak. And up there, it's speculated by many people, there perhaps may be no more than 13 families, 13 people at the peak, pervading down through these different levels, the same basic policy, which is pushing the world towards more and more centralization of power. A lot of what's happening in the world today is because this happened yesterday. Make no mistake about it, everything that is happening in the world today is because of race and religion and the persecution caused by those two different things throughout the history of the world. Is everybody up with me? I know that some of you don't agree with me, that's okay. I'm not telling you you have to. But I want you to go out of here thinking about these things and think about what is it that you really want. You want to be free so that you can be what you want to be? Or do you want to cause a situation whereby you're in charge so that you can force your will upon everybody else so that they'll get pissed off enough to overthrow you and do the same thing to you? Because that's exactly what that brings about. Exactly it's never failed. Study history, you'll see. It's the truth. The founders of this country, by and large, were Christian. Many of them weren't Christian, but pretended to be. Were deists, and you can find that in their writings. Many of them were members of the secret societies. How many of you believe Thomas Jefferson was a Christian? I'm not afraid. I believe that until I read the truth about Thomas Jefferson and studied his life. Thomas Jefferson hated Christianity. Thomas Jefferson tore up the Bible. 
Thomas Jefferson wrote his own Bible because he said the God of the universe could not possibly be that terrible God represented in the King James Version of the Bible. Don't be afraid to raise your hand in here, folks. Nothing that I'm going to say is intended as a personal slant or insult or attack upon anybody in here. But I need your cooperation in order for us all to learn. See, I wasn't afraid. I raised my hand. That's what I believed most of my life until I really studied Thomas Jefferson and found out what he really was. He was a deist. So was Benjamin Franklin. How many of you knew that Benjamin Franklin was the master of the Masonic Lodge in Philadelphia? How many of you knew that he was the master of the Lodge of Nine Muses in France? Have you ever studied the Lodge of Nine Muses? Boy, you better. How many of you knew that when Benjamin Franklin was in the colonies, he pretended to be a pious Christian, although he was not seen in church too much, pretended to be a pious Christian. However, he entered into a sexual relationship and a living arrangement with two different women and sired children by both of them, never married either one. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that when Benjamin Franklin went to France, he surrounded himself with prostitutes and drank champagne almost 24 hours a day and just reveled in orgies? How many of you knew that? You'd be surprised what some ugly old men are capable of. <laughs> See, these are things you don't know because you were taught something different and it makes you uncomfortable to hear what I'm telling you only for the reason that you've been taught something else and you've been reared with it and you've had accepted it. It's hard to let go of something that you have learned and accepted that is not true. You don't want to let go of it because then you have to give up your comfort zone. How many of you know that George Washington was a Freemason? How many of you know if you're a Freemason, you cannot possibly in your wildest dreams be a Christian? It's absolutely impossible. And I can show it to you in their own words. So how could George Washington be a Christian? And you don't even know the slightest, teeniest bit about his real involvement in the secret societies. He founded a military order, a secret order of his military officers, the generals and senior officers of the revolution. What's the name of that order? The Knights? Of Cincinnati. also known as the Knights of the Golden Circle. What sprang out of the Knights of the Golden Circle many years later? The Ku Klux Klan. How many of you knew that? No, see, you don't know these things because you're so willing to accept that what you know is right without investigating. And until you break out of that mold, I'm going to tell you right now, you're never going to know anything about the truth of this country who founded it and why and where it's going, what's happening today, and what the consequences are going to be for us down the line. You see, all of this has happened over and over and over and over and over again throughout the history of the human race. These people know how to lead us wherever they want us to go because they study history and we don't. What was Rome? What was Rome? A republic? What kind of republic? A constitutional republic. They had a constitution. Did you know that? It was a republic. Did you know that? <laughs> what happened to Rome? It fell into oligarchy. And then into dictatorship, then into rampant immorality, and socialism declined, fell, 
and became the Vatican. Anybody here doubt that? I can prove every word of it. The Roman Empire never fell. It changed its name. The emperor became the pope. This is the truth. The old pantheon of Roman gods became the pantheon of saints, and they are identical in name and everything else. Now, I'm not trying to hurt Catholics. I'm not saying that you belong to the wrong religion. I'm not telling you to change your religion. I believe in freedom. I'll fight for you to be a Catholic or a Buddhist or a Baptist or whatever you want to be. But when you come to talk to me, I'm going to tell you the truth about all of it, whether you want to hear it or not. And the only way to escape that is to get away from me. Okay? We are all manipulated. All of us. Do you have the freedom to choose your religion? Do you? Well, it depends upon a few things. So, however you answered that, whether you answered it loudly or quietly, you were right. doesn't matter. If you were reared in a family that did not indoctrinate you into any religion, then by the time you reached the age where you could be responsible to make your own decision, yes, you could choose your own religion based upon honest study. If you're a child and your mother is Jewish, what are you? You're Jewish. And how are you reared? Jewish. So from the time you're a little baby, you are taught to be Jewish. Do you have a choice? No. Is Jewish a race? No. So is it true that if you're born of a Jewish mother, you're a Jew whether you want to be or not? No. You're a Jew because you're taught to be a Jew from the time you're born. Same with Catholics. If your parents are Catholic from the time you're a little child, you're required to go to catechism. What is catechism? Brainwashing. What is teaching this little Jewish child that he's a Jew, whether he wants to be or not, and teaching him how to be a Jew all the time, his little baby, up until the time he grows up? It's brainwashing. What is it when your parents take you to the Baptist church from the time you're a little bitty baby and require you to go to Bible school and teach you all of these things from the time that you're that small and can't make a conscious choice of your own and don't know what is right is wrong. What is that? Brainwashing. Is it right? Depends on your viewpoint. Personally, I think it's wrong. I think everybody should be able to make a choice based upon honest investigation and finding out what is right to them. Now, a really devout Christian would tell me, I'm full of crap. A really devout Jew would tell me the same thing. So would a devout Catholic, and so would a devout Buddhist. Because they don't want to hear it. Why do they do these things? To make sure that the religion survives and prospers and grows. Somebody else would say, oh no, it's to make sure that the child is raised in the proper religion. What is the proper religion? I could ask everybody in this room and get just as many different answers as there are people in this room. Isn't that true? Now, let me ask you something else. If this government were Christian, which Christian is it? Seventh-day Adventist? Certainly not Branch Davidian. <laughs> Baptist? Come on. A relationship, a relationship with what? A relationship with Jesus Christ? Can you have a country that is Christian and have freedom? No. What if... In a hundred years, the majority of the population changes their religion to Buddhist. Now, what kind of country is it? You can't assign a religion to a country. A country doesn't exist except on paper and in your mind. The religion belongs to the people. Does everybody understand that? 
What does freedom say? What is freedom? The right to choose. As long as I don't hurt the person or property of any other human being, I can believe what I want, go to whatever church I want, be whatever I want, read whatever book I want, do whatever I wish, and do it abundantly and with prosperity. So, gee, if our founding fathers were deists and they were members of the secret societies, and some of them were masquerading as Christians, and some of them were just flat weren't Christians, weren't masquerading at all. Why did they create this country? They came here to create a new world, not a country. How many of you really read what they wrote? They didn't come here to create a country. They came here to create a new world. What did they call it? They called it the New World, didn't they? What else did they call it? The Grand Experiment? The Great Experiment? Remember reading those words? And just read right over them, didn't really understand what it meant? They came from a world that was oppressive, ruled by kings and queens and popes and prelates and bishops and lords and barons who just because they didn't like the way you look could chop you into quarters and throw you to the pigs if they wanted to, any time they wanted to. And if you didn't believe the religion they wanted you to believe in, they'd burn you at the stake or torture you. In some way, make your life absolutely miserable. They came here to create a new world, free from all of that. But they knew that they could not be safe in the new world if the old world was the way that it was. How do you get rid of kings and queens and barons and lords and emperors and prelates and sultans and emirs? How do you do that? That's exactly right. A new world order. From the beginning, that was the goal, ladies and gentlemen. It's the absolute truth. From the very beginning, that was the goal. What do you think new world means? What do you think it means? So they did something that was unheard of, never been done in the history of the world. They set the cattle free. They said, ah, you're not really a serf. You're not really a slave. You're not really as dumb as they say you are. You're not really a bunch of cattle. Now you're free men. you got brains. We're even going to write this contract to guarantee your freedom. But we know you won't keep it because you're human. And they wrote about that, didn't they? Didn't they tell us all the ways that we would give it up? Didn't they write about it? Didn't they warn us over and over and over and over again? In all of their writings, they knew we would give it up because we're human. And they were geniuses who understood human nature probably better than any single group of men that's ever lived throughout the history of the world. They understood it perfectly. What did Ben Franklin say when he came out of the Constitutional Convention after everything was signed, sealed, and delivered? Somebody said, hey, Ben, what have ye wrought? See? A republic, if you can keep it. He knew. They all knew. What was it really about? Why did they give it to us if they knew we would give it up? And they did know. Make no mistake about that. They knew. What do you think the fight over federalism was all about? They wanted to make sure that at some future point, the great central government would seize control. And they even pretended to fight over this.
like all of these secret society people do. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. We want all these people to do something. So you and I are going to get together. We're going to create two different causes. We're going to get all these people wrapped up in it. We're going to pretend to fight against each other. And this fight is going to bring about the conclusion that we really wanted in the first place. And they're all going to think that it was done accidentally by them, and we didn't have anything to do with it. How many of you understand the concept of Hegelian dialectic of manipulation of political resolution? If you don't, you'd better read Hegel and you'd better study it, because that's what's happening. That's what the abortion issue is all about. Can government decide the abortion issue? Can you decide it with laws? If you could, everybody would obey the law, there wouldn't be any issue, would there? The Supreme Court has already made the law, haven't they? It's the truth. The whole issue is designed to create a conflict which cannot be solved except by some world body. Everybody complains about politicians. Everybody says they suck. Yeah. Well, where do people think these politicians come from? They don't fall out of the sky. They don't pass through a membrane from another reality. They come from American parents and American families, American homes, American schools, American churches, American businesses, and American universities, and they're elected by American citizens. This is the best we can do, folks. This is what we have to offer. It's what our system produces. Garbage in, garbage out. If you have selfish, ignorant citizens, if you have selfish, ignorant citizens, you're going to get selfish, ignorant leaders. And term limits ain't going to do you any good. You're just going to wind up with a brand new bunch of selfish, ignorant Americans. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's not the politicians who suck. Maybe something else sucks around here. Like the public. Yeah, the public sucks. There's a nice campaign slogan for somebody. The public sucks. Fuck hope. Fuck hope. Because if it's really just the fault of these politicians, then where are all the other bright people of conscience? Where are all the bright, honest, intelligent Americans ready to step in and save the nation and lead the way? We don't have people like that in this country. Everybody's at the mall, scratching his ass, picking his nose, taking his credit card out of his fanny pack and buying a pair of sneakers with lights in them. <laughs> So I have solved this little political dilemma for myself in a very simple way. On election day, I stay home. I don't vote. Fuck them. Fuck them. I don't vote. Two reasons. Two reasons I don't vote. First of all, it's meaningless. This country was bought and sold and paid for a long time ago. The shit they shuffle around every four years <laughs> doesn't mean a fucking thing. And secondly, I don't vote because I believe if you vote, you have no right to complain. People like to twist that around, I know. They say, they say, well, if you don't vote, you have no right to complain. But where's the logic in that? If you vote and you elect dishonest, incompetent people and they get into office and screw everything up, well, you are responsible for what they have done. You caused the problem. You voted them in. You have no right to complain. I, on the other hand, who did not vote, who did not vote, who in fact, did not even leave the house on election day. I'm in no way responsible for what these people have done and have every right to complain as loud as I want about the mess you created that I had nothing to do with. So I know that a little later on this year you're going to have another one of those really swell presidential elections that you like so much. You'll enjoy yourselves. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm sure as soon as the election is over, your country will improve immediately. As for me, I'll be home on that day doing essentially the same thing as you. The only difference is... When I get finished masturbating, I'm going to have a little something to show for it, folks. Thank you very much. They will put two or three up there for you to vote on. All belong to them. They'll even make it like they're really against each other. They'll make you believe it. They'll even throw you some trash about one of them, so maybe you won't vote for him, thinking the election's fair because, ah, that's not a moral person. And then who do you put in the White House? most immoral person that ever lived on this planet. <laughs> William Jefferson, Communist Clinton. You don't have a choice. That disappeared a long time ago. 
There's not a nickel's worth of difference between the Democratic and Republican Party, and hasn't been for an awful long time. And it doesn't matter which one is in the White House, we still go toward the New World Order, don't we? We still go more and more into socialism, don't we? But if they were truly different, that wouldn't happen, would it? You care. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. And that's the truth. Some of you just grouch the old codgers and you know it. <laughs> like, like I get sometimes. <clears throat> now, if I get a little impatient sometimes on the radio or anywhere else, it's because I've been doing this for so many years, folks. I don't want to be rude to anybody. I really don't. But I've learned a few things. One is there's no time left to suffer fools. There just isn't any. So if I'm confronted with a fool, I just let them know it, get it off my chest, get rid of them as quickly as I can, and hope that that is enough of a shock that maybe they'll get out of their foolishness. Okay? Because there just isn't any time. We're going down the tubes on a roller coaster. There is no time to tell you all that you are brilliant, wonderful American people and that, uh, you know, with people like you, we don't have any problem. We're going to turn it around right away and, you know, pass the hat and put some money in there and hoorah. Bullshit. <laughs> it ain't true, and I ain't going to tell it to you. You're never going to hear that from me. We're in this situation because all of us, me included, were dummies for most of our lives. And unless we change that, we are never going to turn anything around. And that is the cold, hard truth. Foreign Relations is published by the Council on Foreign Relations, and you can subscribe to their publication. Whatever they write in there usually happens about two years later. Whatever it is. It's almost like magic. If they're not involved in any of this, how come what they write about always happens? And if you don't study them and their symbology and what they believe in and what their agenda is, you'll never know. You could read this and never know what this guy said. Oh, that sounds nice. That's what most people say. Oh, that sounds nice. Doesn't it sound nice in a way? But if you really understand, it's not nice at all. What they're saying is, screw you, we're going to enslave you. We're going to engineer how you live, how you think, how you work, everything. Hitler tried it, didn't he? You see, this is a big de deception that Hitler was a right-wing guy. Hitler, and you better learn this if you never learn anything else in your world. Hitler was a socialist. Nazi means National Socialist German Workers' Party, doesn't it? Hitler socialized Germany. All control is always on the left. Always. If you're left wing, you're for control of yourself and other people. A scale measures two extremes. On the far left, you have total control of everything and everyone, and, by the way, ownership of everything and everyone, by the state, which is more important than anything. It's called communism. On the right, all the way at the extreme, you have the total absence and lack of any and all control by anybody over anything or anyone. That's called anarchy. Anarchy sucks. Communism sucks. Socialism is just a little step above communism and usually degrades into communism, and it also sucks. Usually, anything close to anarchy also sucks. And so do all those people who want to engage in those things. To tell you the truth, they're in a mind state that sucks. A constitutional republic is somewhere in the middle of these two extremes and provides safeguards to protect individual freedoms and creator-endowed liberty. Whether you believe in God or not, if you don't understand that freedom and liberty must be creator-endowed, then you are opening the door for somebody to take it away from you because they don't have to answer to a creator. You understand? So even if you don't believe in God, you better start. If you want to stay free. If you want to stay free, if you don't care about freedom, you don't have to believe in God. 
You see, there must be something that human beings answer to to protect us from ourselves. Because the minute we become God, how many of you in here want me to be God? I don't want me to be God either. Because I know who I am. I know the temptations that I'm subject to. I have seen what power can do to people. And I might fall prey to that same corruption that would allow me to use that power wrongly. Even Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian, was tempted. What was it that Satan offered him? The world. What is it these people are after? The world. Jesus turned it down. They're not going to. If you were to give me the world, you know, I'd be hard put to turn it down. Because then I could make it the way I want it to be. Is it the way I want it to be the way you want it to be? You don't know that. You don't know, and that's the big problem. Why would you even want to take a chance? I'm a pretty good guy. But you don't want to take a chance on giving me the world or anybody else. You don't want the world. You don't want vast amounts of power. Because you're a human being. And power will corrupt you and destroy you, and you will use it to destroy others. And that's the truth of the matter. The greatest thing about this country, whether you agree with me or not, it's the absolute truth. If you take this away from any person or any group of people, you have no country freedom. You have no religion. You have no sound money. You don't have any of it. You're subject to the control of the people who have taken your freedom away and who are now subjecting you to their will because that's what lack of freedom is. Being subject. You know what subject means? To someone else's will. Freedom means you're subject to your own will. As long as what? As long as you take responsibility for your actions and you never hurt the person or property of any other human being. Period. Aren't they trying to bombard you with the delusion that liberals are for freedom? Liberals are for socialism. Liberals started out being for freedom when there wasn't any. Being for freedom was liberal. Being conservative was for the power of the king. Remember? All of our founding fathers were liberals. Believe it. They were also traitors. So when somebody calls me a, a traitor because uh, I'm supposedly against the government, it doesn't bother me. I'm in damn good company. But you see, I'm not a traitor. What is the government? The government is a contract signed by the Founding Fathers, which is called the Constitution for the United States of America. That is the government. That says what the government can do, what the government cannot do, when it can do it, when it cannot do it, where it can do it, where it cannot do it. Is this a democratic country? No. no. Was it ever meant to be? Never. No. Never. So why do we hear all this talk about democracy all the time? It's the agenda to brainwash the American populace into accepting democracy, which is what? The first step into socialism. Why? No, because in our human failings and in our temptations, if it's one man, one vote, the majority is going to vote themselves everything, right? And if you vote yourself everything, what is that? That's socialism. Lenin, V.I. Lenin, you all know who he is? The man who founded the Soviet Union? V.I. Lenin said, democracy is indispensable to socialism. You can take a free people 
Make them into a democracy from whatever they were before, and they will vote themselves into slavery every single time because they are weak. They want the benefits. They want the check from the government. They want the job from the government. They want a car from the government. They want medical care from the government. They want everything from the government. What's the fallacy in that? The government doesn't have anything to give you unless they first take it away from you. You have to understand the agenda. You have to understand who's bringing it about and why before you can see the manipulations and how people are being used and manipulated to bring it about. Now, if you don't understand the ordo ab chao technique, ordo out of, order out of chaos, by the way, that's the motto of the 32nd degree of Freemasonry, Ordo ab chaos. We'll just devolve everything into a state of chaos, and out of that we will bring order to the world the way we want it. And everybody will get down on their knees and thank us for restoring order and security to their lives. And they will be willing to give up anything to us for that favor. Quote, in the United States today, as in many other countries, the collection of second and third waves creates social tensions, dangerous conflicts, and strange new political wave fronts that cut across the usual divisions of class, race, sex, or party. All the old polarizations and coalitions break up. End quote. How many of you women thought Gloria Steinem was doing you a favor? Gloria Steinem is a communist who created the concept of feminism to destroy American family life. Feminism is not good for you. Being a responsible woman is good for you. Being a good person is good for you. Whether you choose to do it in business or in the home doesn't make any difference to me. And yes, you should get equal pay for equal work. And yes, you should have the vote and all of this other stuff. But feminism? Feminism is war between women and men. It was created intentionally to destroy the basic unit of freedom in this country, and that's the family. There's always been a plan. They call it the great work, the great plan, the lost word. There's all kinds of words for it. It exists. It is being brought about. It is conscious. It is working its effect of, upon us now, today, as I speak. Now, I'm going to just give you a little demonstration of the degree of control that is already in effect in this country concerning communications. Now, if you're smart, you know that if you turn the dial on your radio and on your TV set and on every news story, it has the same slant in the same words, and it's the same stories, you know that the news and the media are controlled. If you don't, you're not playing with a full deck of cards. Okay? It is absolutely absurd to believe that all these different networks, news stations, newspapers, and radio stations are all owned by different people, yet they all carry the exact same stories every day, worded in the exact same way, with the same agenda and the same slant. You see, if they were all separate and independent, that could never happen in a million years because no two people ever attached the same importance to the same event or the same slant on the same story unless they're handed it. You can't get into the concept that, hey, this is right and that is wrong and there is no in-between because that's not true. There are all kinds of in-between all the time. And truth is elusive, folks. I have to tell you this. It's elusive at best, and it's hard to find. And the moment you think you know it all, you have lost yourself again. It's one of the major things that I've discovered in my life. 
Because there really are puppet masters. There really are controllers. There really are builders, but they're not engaged in building buildings. They're engaged in building people. They're building what they call the perfect race. They're perfecting humanity in order to control nature. They're building the utopian world that they perceive that we need. Anything that opposes the status quo, if you won't listen to it, you're already brainwashed. You've closed your mind and you are at the mercy of whatever manipulation they want to throw your way because you've already determined that they're telling you the truth no matter what. You don't investigate. You have accepted blindly. That's the most dangerous thing that can happen to anyone. The moment that you say, this guy right here, I like him. I like what he says. He's right. I'm going to listen to him. And anybody that says anything different to him is wrong. You just totally destroyed yourself. Because the truth is, he's a human being. I'm a human being. This young lady is a human being. Bill Clinton is a human being. Okay? When you mistake people for righteousness, or when you mistake people for the message, or when you mistake people for government, or when you mistake people for religion, you're making a big mistake. Because people, for the most part, are a big mistake. Well, I could probably go through a list of about 500 things that can make an average, normal, good-thinking, good-doing person for most of the time, at some point in their life, do something that's absolutely terrible. The concept that imperfect men can rule imperfect men is absolutely ludicrous. The concept that you can give someone power and they're not going to abuse that power is also ludicrous. It is wrong for us to ever get into that kind of thinking. And the more power you give someone, the more opportunity they have to abuse or misuse that power. And the easier it is to fall into temptation for them. I am on a mission, and that mission is to slap people upside the head and wake them up and even make them hate me, if that's what it takes to get them to go examine what I'm telling them to find out that it's right. You see, I don't care how it's done, as long as they wake up. Listen to everyone, read everything, believe absolutely nobody, including me, including your mother, including your pastor, your preacher, your priest, your Uncle Bob and anybody else that you can think of unless you can prove it in your own research. And research it doesn't mean getting a book off the library shelf and reading it and saying, well, he said it, so it must be true. Because I wrote a book, you see. And I'm telling you, don't believe me unless in your own research you can prove what it is that I'm telling you. Because this is the age of deception. When this country was created, we thought that we were getting away from the aristocracies and the kings of Europe. But lo and behold, like I said, you know, I can document that 11 of our presidents are related to the royal family in the United Kingdom. A lot of information is right there if we scratch below the surface. But they realize that there are very few people like me that are going to be looking in the right direction. And they don't have time to hide it all. So there is an enormous amount of information out there uh, that relates to these families. So what you're saying then, basically, Fritz, is that the information is out there, and really all you have to do is begin to search for it. Is that correct? Yes. Boy, I tell you, Fritz, this all sounds so incredible, just like you said. Their whole purpose throughout history has been to teach a small number of people how to become adept at controlling everyone else and presenting their societies as desirable to the profane so that you'll go knock on the door and say, hey, can I be a member and be initiated? 
with the promise of learning some great secret. What is that secret? The secret is how to control everybody else. And you never understand how to control everybody else until you get to the top of this pyramid of initiation. Most people never make it past the third step. All above that are carefully chosen and nurtured and taught. And Americans for all these years have been looking around for the enemy. They've never been able to find an enemy. You see, the enemy has always been here. It's your uncle, your aunt, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your nephew, your nieces who belong to the fraternal orders collectively known as the mysteries. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent.